everyone, it is Sunday morning and I am here with Rob from Viking Creative Studios. We are going to be looking at several different types of drones, pros and cons and sizes and that sort of thing. So, ready to go? I'm ready, this should be good. Let's okay. take a look. What we have here is the DJI Spock, the smallest drone of our group. Uh, this is more of a selfie drone. Uh, kind of, in my experience with it so far, it does not handle the wind that well. But where it's short on the wind, it does take excellent video. It's There's no 4K on it, but it's 1080. And it does upgrade to 4K very well. Uh, with this here, it's where I, what I like with the Spark over the larger drones. It's really good for getting into small places. Uh, it's not as obtrusive. It's as, really easier to bring around, right? Yeah, it's a lot easier to yep. bring around. Um, and if you're flying in a crowd, people today are, are very. Um, they think you're spying on them with the bigger drones. Where with this, it, it looks more like a toy. So it's right. more accepted in a crowd. Uh, you kind of probably more opt to use it too, because it's not like in anyone's face, and that's nice. Yeah, it's and I mean, that, I like to point out the downfalls first is battery life. Battery life on this is absolutely horrible. You'll get ten to twelve minutes per battery. Uh, I've gone as high as 14. If you're any wind or you put it into the sport mode, you're going to get about eight. So the battery life is really low. Now, are the batteries cheap or are they real expensive for that drone? Uh, well, that that is one of the the other thing with it is with like the Phantom and the other DJI drones. Batteries start at like $149. These batteries here. I've seen them as low as $49 on uh, Amazon, but generally from the DJI site, they're $59 a piece. So they are a lot cheaper. So cost versus the time, I, I think it would probably balance out. All right, the next drone we have here is the Phantom 3 uh, Advance. Uh, when these came out, this is this drone here I've had for about two years now. Uh, when they first came out, they started with the Standard, the Advance, and then the Pro. Uh, I look at it with, right now, I wish I'd gotten the Pro because the Pro does shoot 4K at 30 frames a second. This one here, they have tweaked the firmware where I can shoot 4K on it, but it's only at 15 frames a second. That's tougher, yeah. Yeah, so it's... But it's yeah. its own integrated camera. It's a DJI camera on that one. Yes. Yep. Uh, three, three axis gimbal. Uh, it, it's got all, all the bells and whistles. Uh, it's... It's a really nice um, drone, but the only problem that I have with it, size-wise, yeah, is the size. And like I said, the, the people are so paranoid today. Uh, you put this up in the air, they think that you're spying on them. Yep. Uh, it, it's, I've I've had a couple of people questioning me. Um, I actually had one time a police officer stop and ask me what I was doing. So I mean, it's it's the it comes with the territory, but this these drones here, at one point, you had to register them. You don't have to register them anymore. Uh, that's, uh, with the FAA, that's a different story for a different time. Um, but, I mean, it's a, it's a really good drone. For the price that I paid it, 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 at the time, it was a really good drone, but... How that, how's that camera quality on it? Pretty good? It, it takes excellent video. Um, it does, like I said, it does up to 60 frames per second at 1080. That's pretty good. Uh, it can like, it can do 4K, but it's only 15 frames a second. Uh, what about battery? How's the battery life on them? Battery on the, the Phantom 3 is about anywhere, about 18 to 20 minutes. That's pretty good. Um, I've gotten up to 22 and I've gotten less depending on, it, it all depends on how you fly it. The more you push oh, yeah. the drone, the quicker the battery is going to die. Oh, yeah. uh, it, it, it's very, I mean, precise, the um, controls on it. it it's it's, it's nice a really good drone. Does it sit nice and still at a hover? Very good. I mean, it's uh, it's it stays in a hover, I would say, within 
three to four inches. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. So, so that and that one's probably that's one of the older ones out of the three that we're going to look at. So yeah. those that's still pretty good. Even for somebody that's looking for a drone on a budget, that's not a bad idea. Right. I mean, um, you you can find these on um, Amazon now for uh, like three or four hundred dollars. Yeah. People trying trying to sell their old drones to get a newer drone. Yep. So I mean, there's there's plenty of them out there. Yeah. So I I had a Phantom Two. It was a little older than even this, and um, it didn't have the DJI camera. It had a GoPro uh, on a gimbal. And I remember it being a pretty dependable drone, so I, th I'm sure with this being even newer, they've just gotten better. Yeah, I mean, w when when they went to their own cameras, uh, the GoPros weren't that reliable, um, just for the fact of you really couldn't see what you were shooting on the GoPro. Yeah, no this, live screen. Yeah, the, with this, this does have live screen, um, and you can tweak your settings while in flight. Uh, with the GoPro, you couldn't do that. Yeah, it, that's definitely a game changer. I noticed my shots were getting so much better after after using a FPV. <laughs> All right, so the last drone we're we're looking at here is uh, the biggest one of the three, and it's it, as far as timeline goes, it comes out in the middle between the two smaller ones. Uh, it's the Inspire one by DJI. The problem with the Inspire is, as you can see by its size, its convenience does not exist. <laughs> it's like such a hassle to bring anywhere. Um, the footage on it is really good. Like it's, you can, if you're into color grading or like heavy editing, the footage is, is high enough quality that it can stand up to that. But you pay the price with having to lug this entire drone around. Um, if you look at it compared to a size of the, the Spark, you know, the Spark is way, way smaller. And um, for the size, it packs a really great quality. So it's it's kind of like a, a trade off, you know. You're gonna get a little bit better footage from the Inspire, but you know you, it, it's it's a hassle to bring or even take anywhere. Um, it does 4K at 30 frames a second, although I don't film in 30 frames a second. Um, and the other thing is that when it goes mid flight, which we'll show you here, that the arms can increase and they go above it, so the center of gravity lowers and it it just makes it more stable. Um, so where Mark was talking about the spark, uh, having trouble in the wind, this thing I've actually flown in hurricane condition winds and it was able to take it. It's, it's a very heavy drone, so it can handle the wind no problem. Um, but the trade off for it is the battery life. The battery life is terrible. It does, um, usually if I'm really flying this thing, I'll get like 10 to 12 minutes. Um, I've, and then if you're, you're being more, um, gentle with it, it you can get anywhere from 15 to 18 if you're extremely lucky. Looking at footage that I've seen from from this type of drone, uh, it's it's not the the hobbyist that would would really want to use this. Or, no, if or, you're a vlogger, it's it's not it's not great for that. I mean, that's that's what I do. I vlog now, and it it's so inconvenient. I don't want to really use it because I have to lug it around. It's a it's a pain to set up. But yeah, like, like you've said in the past, is uh, you wouldn't want to have to climb up the side of a mountain with this thing. No, no. If I, I mean, if I was going to go hiking, I'd want to get drone shots, but I couldn't take this. Right. It's it's like six pounds. It's huge. You'd have to strap it to something, and then you have the giant controller. Um, if you look at the um, Spark controller, it folds really flat. You can almost stick that in your pocket. You know, it's the newer the newer drones. Depending on what you need, is is definitely I think more convenient and. Convenience is king in my world. So, oh, yeah, definitely. You know. definitely. Um, but we'll, we're going to send these up in the air so you guys can see a little bit more shots on how they handle, how they hover, and, uh, and just a little bit maneuverability-wise. So stay tuned, and uh, we'll get them set up. All right, up here at Black Hut with uh, Rob from Viking Creative Studios. We're going to put the drones up in the air a little bit here, um, see what they can do, check them out. Get some still shots, do some pretty cool stuff here. All right, we're gonna be put. Rob's gonna be putting his Inspire up in the air right now and we'll check out a few things here. There we go. So before I launch, if you guys wanna take a look, there is like live screen, you can see us here. You know, it gives you a live feedback just I think like the, the other ones do now. And uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and launch it off. It'll go up, the arms increase so that way you don't get it in the shot. 
and uh, it hovers pretty steady for the most part. That's the only thing I don't like is it does drip a little, but I think you can prop it up so it, you can adjust it. Go ahead if you want to get some close shots. Go ahead. In general, when you're looking at a drone, if you're flying a drone, the green lights are generally behind, although I'll show you how that's different on the Spark a little bit. But generally, the green lights are in the back, and red lights are in the front. So when you get it up in the air, if you can see the lights, like at nighttime, you'll be able to keep the orientation that way. Uh, that thing comes down like a shot. Whew. Try to bring it close to land. Pretty sweet. That's the inspire. A little bit bigger than the small ones, and it, as I said, it, it handles the air really well. The only problem is battery time. You know, we went down probably 15% right there, just kind of hovering. Um, and if you're really sending it to go running, then it goes a lot faster, just like any other drone, really. But, um, yeah, a little bit more toward the pro side, but at the same time, is I don't think it's a really, like, for filmmaking, but it's not convenient enough for vlogging. All right, we're going to go on. Next one, we'll do the Phantom 3. Uh, I haven't used the Phantom 3 in a little while, so I'm not going to do too much with it because, to be honest, I, I may not even have the updates in it. So hopefully that it's all set. So but. now uh, Mark's going to get the other one ready so we can show you guys uh, how it flies. Generally, DJI products are pretty similar as far as controls. I don't think they both fly the same on yours, right? Yeah, the controls pretty, are the pretty same. close. They use two different apps, though. Two different apps, um, so I, the interface might be a little different. I, I don't, I'm not positive. Does it look look like they're the same look? It, it's very similar. Um, the difference is with uh, was it? it's DJI Go is for the Phantom Three. I can actually live stream to YouTube and Facebook with this. Oh, nice! All right, so that's all set. Batteries are all in. Let's turn on the controller. And do the double shot. Aircraft is connected. Let's go to the battery. I mean, to the phone. When you go to a new place with the Phantom 3, I don't know whether it's the same thing with the Inspire, you got to calibrate the um, compass. And what that does is because it's a new area, it sets up for the GPS, the satellites, and everything. So I gotta show you how I'm gonna look this. You look so stupid when you're calibrating the, the compass, but I remember doing it. Gotta do it here. All right, so what you first thing you gotta do, you hold it with the camera facing you, and you gotta turn in a circle counterclockwise. I know this looks dumb. Thank God there's no one else up here. Okay, and once you've done it, it'll tell you to turn it on its side. And again, you got to go in a circle. Your left stick down to the bottom right, and the right stick down to the bottom left. I am having problems with this. I have to do some calibration. You see, it's kind of drifting a little drifting on me. So, I had to do some reading on it, but. Just, 
I'm just rotating right now and look how much it's moving. General same controls uh, as the Inspire. Uh, camera's a little bit less. Uh, like I said, it does, this one does 4K but only 15 frames a second. And uh, to, me, to me it's a toy. I love this. It, this is basically a very expensive toy. And so we're going to bring this down. This lands really easy, you just bring it in. Alright, what we're going to do right now is I'm going to take this and we're going to go to the Spark. The Spark has many, many cool ways to take off. Uh, it has hand gestures. Trust me, you're going to like this. Yeah, I think that's what probably most people are waiting to see is the yeah. Spark. This is newer. Alright, let's get that ready. Alright, so Mark's got the Spark all ready to go. As you can see, that thing is so small, it's nice. It's got to be convenient. Really nice. Uh, the one thing I, I like with this, it's this is more of a vlogging drone. Uh, it's low altitude, tight areas. You don't even need a remote control. You can actually control this with a cell phone, Android or an iPhone. Uh, I opted to get the remote control because you get more of a distance. You get almost three times the distance on it. That's nice. Not sure whether you you could ever reach that distance, especially with the batteries. Because I think the batteries would die out before you got, I think it's like a, a mile and a half you can go. Um, but the one thing I like, I love the handheld takeoff with it. Um, I'm still learning a lot of the functions on this. Uh, I still, you'll, whenever you see me fly this, I'll have the remote in my hand just in case I lose it. You know, lose the connection or the, the gesture motion. But we say we put this thing up. Now I've got, I have it in gesture mode right now. Let me see if I move my hand. Follows along. I go down. That is unbelievable. That's nice. It's actually getting a warning right now. You see up on the top here. It's too close. Now, if I was, oh, because I was right there. Right, if I come, you have, you have a sense of, I think it's within five feet. Yep. Right. We'll go over and go in here. And do active track. Okay. What active track will do, see, now it's too close. Yep. Now it's getting a little Yep, we've got to be 10 feet away. If it doesn't work, then what you do is grab it and turn it to its side. And it turns off. And it turns off. Oh, that's nice. So that's the DJI Spark. As you can see, battery dies really quick. Huh? Yeah, that was about 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. All right, so we just finished flying the drones. Um, Mark flew the Inspire. I we took a look at the um, the Phantom and also the Spark, and uh, we're gonna take a look at the footage later on and see how it came out. But uh, I was really impressed with the Spark. I thought it, it, it flew really well. Yeah, the the Spark, like I said, even looking at the price compared to what the other drones are now, it's yeah. You you can buy just the Spark if you want to fly it with just your phone, and I believe it's four ninety nine, yeah, and that's it hard comes. To beat comes with one battery uh, you can add batteries later on so if, if you're on a cheap budget which yeah I usually am <laughs> um, th that's the way to go uh, the inspire oh oh man <laughs> yeah that that's uh, it's got a lot of power but uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. like a Ferrari but yeah. you pay for it <laughs> yeah yeah I mean that that thing is nice I still I mean I've said it in past ones of my vlogs that I, I get nervous when it when it goes out and I can't see it and yep. I've got to get over that to, to get better shots but I mean just getting with someone else that, that does the drones and I've learned a lot today a lot of stuff that I didn't know and different techniques on how, how to do it 
Yeah, th thanks for meeting me out here. We're gonna get together again and yep. do some more videos. Yep. Uh, today was a little last second, so we didn't have a, a super great format planned out, but um, we'll, we'll, we'll come up with something next time and we'll take our time. I just, we've both been busy like crazy. I've been working on the Haunted History series and just events, and yeah. I know he's got a lot going on. So. Yeah, it's uh, I, I'm a father of teenage girls and with school starting and my wife a teacher. <laughs> I have no time whatsoever right now, but thank you guys. Thanks for thanks for watching the vlog. We do appreciate it. Yeah, it, you can great. check out check out the bottom I have a link to to Rob's uh, channel. Great channel. He's got really good content on that. Great vlog shots on it. Really really interesting stuff. Oh, I appreciate it. Thanks. Same thing. I'll put marks down below if you're watching on my channel. Uh, it'll be in the description. You guys can click on the link there. It'll take you right to his channel. Yeah. My channel, I, I, I kind of dork out a lot because I try to embarrass my daughters. <laughs> and I do a pretty good job at it. So, you know, I probably embarrass myself more than I want to. But, hey, <laughs> this is fun. But, thanks. This is, this is awesome. We are going to do another one. We'll, we'll plan it out a little bit more. Uh, we won't look so amateurish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we will. Yeah, <laughs> yeah probably, we will. probably. <laughs> but, thanks for watching. And... Check out our channels. All right, see you guys later. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my video. I appreciate it. If you're new, please click the subscribe button below. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know that you like the video. If you really like the video, you can also subscribe up here. If you want to see the latest video that I did, this most likely from yesterday, click here. If you want to see a video that I did one year ago, please click here. Thanks again for watching. I do appreciate it. And I will see everyone again tomorrow.